Okay, in lesson 10, we're going to be comparing and evaluate expressions with parentheses. Okay, look, question one was already done for us. I'm going to go to two, and it says circle expressions that give the same product as six times three eighths. And what we did in class was we went ahead and evaluated the six and three eighths, so we'll do that. Six times three eighths which equals six times three over eight, which gives us 18 eighths. And I'm gonna leave it at that because we're just looking at one, this algebraic expression and what our answer and our fraction was. And that's enough for us to evaluate the rest of them. So let's take a look at the first one now. If we take a look at this one here and we're gonna rewrite it and it says eight divided by 3 times 6. And I can already look at these two and between here and here and see this is not going to work. But let's go ahead and fill it out. And that becomes 8 eighteenths. And we can see that's the exact inverse. So this one would not equal it. So let's go to the second one. And this would end up being 3 divided by 8 times 6. And once again, we can see that it's not going to be equal, but if we want to be sure, we just rewrite it as 348s, and we can see this one would not. Now let's go to the third one. Third one says 6 times 3 divided by 8, and when we solve this, it's going to be 18 eighths, and that is exactly, you can see right here it matched, so we really didn't even have to solve it all the way. We could have stopped here but we just wanted to make sure. So we know this one here is correct. Let's go to the next one, which says eight divided by six. And since that's in parentheses after that, we're gonna multiply by three. Hmm, that's interesting. So when we rewrite it now, we would go eight times three over six, which is gonna give us 24, six, okay? And we can see right off that isn't going to work because 6 would go into 24 four times. 8 would go into 18 only twice. So we can see that this is not equivalent. The next one, 6 times 8 thirds, which equals 6 times 8 over 3, which equals 48 thirds. And we can see already, we already know that if we did this one, that would end up with 2 and 2 eighths. And this one here is going to be a lot more than that. Okay. And the last one, 3 eighths times 6, which equals 3 times 6 over 8, which equals 18 eighths. And that was a good one. So there's the two that were equivalent to that same expression. Okay, and the next one, we're wanting to write the expression and then evaluate, and evaluate means to solve. So here it says subtract four from one six of 42. So I can see this is my key right here. I know one six of 42, okay? And it says subtract four from. The biggest mistake is to come over here and put it on this side because that's where the subtract four is, but it says from. So I know that I have to once I find 1 6 of 42, I've got to subtract 4 from it. Okay, now to evaluate this, I can see this is going to end up being 1 times 40. It's going to be 42 6 minus 4. And when we do 42 6, we have, we have a couple different. We could either change the whole number to a fraction or we can change the fraction to a mixed number. Let's go ahead and do the fraction of the fixed number. So we know 42, 6. 6 will go into 42 7 times. 7 times 6 is 42. So we know that's going to be equal to 7 minus 4. So our answer is going to be 3. On the next one, 7 times as much as the sum. And that sum is a key word of 1 third and four fifths. So sum is the addition problem. So I'm going one third plus four fifths and we're going to 
seven times as much, so seven times. Now, one of the things I've shown them is that when they're adding fractions, some students that are still struggling on this, they should use this method right here, okay? We're gonna do a butterfly, and we're gonna make big wings here, and we're gonna circle these two, and one times five gives us five. We're gonna make a big wing on this side, four times three equals 12, and then I have my addition sign in the center, and then I'm gonna multiply these two, three times five is 15. And, I, and what that's gonna end up with is five plus 12 over 15 which equals 17 fifteenths. Now coming back over here, we know this now is 17 fifteenths, and we have to multiply that by seven. So we'll end up with seven times 17 over 15. Now there's, let me get a good multiplication in there. 15 and the ones on top have no common denominators. So I know I've got to do seven times 17. I know seven times 10 is 70. Seven times seven is 49 over 15. So that's going to equal, let's see, 119 fifteenths. Now, I could go ahead and make this into a mixed number, but there's no cause to that is our answer. If I did want to, I would subtract, I would divide 15 into 119, okay? But it's not asking us to do that. Okay, and D, two-thirds of the product, product being the answer to a multiplication problem, and we're multiplying 3 eighths and 16. So we go 3 eighths times 16, and we want to know what two-thirds of the product. So we're going to find that, then we're going to multiply it by two-thirds. So we know this is going to end up being 3 times 16 over 8. Then we're going to multiply it by 2 thirds. Now on these, you can see 8, I have, a com I have common factors. 8 will go into 8 one time. 8 will go into 16 two times. And that simplifies it for us, because now we can see that 3 times 2 would be 6 ones times 2 thirds. So in other words, we act and then when we multiply that out, I'm going to come up here with it. We have 6 times 2, which would be 12 thirds, which would equal 4. All right, E was done for us. So now we're going to go to F, 15 times as much as 1 fifth of 12. Well, I know this 1 fifth of 12 is multiplication, so I'm going to go 1 fifth times 12. It says 15, 15 times as much. So I know I'm going to multiply that by 15 after I'm done. So this is going to end up being 12 fifths times 15, and I'm going to rewrite that 12 times 15 over 5. And I'm going to do that first because now I can do some elimination. Instead of multiplying 12 times 15, I'm going to say 5 will go into 5 one time, 5 will go into 15 three times, and that leaves me with 36 ones, so our answer is 36. This elimination right here, uh, uh, being able to see a factor that is multiplied and divided by the same factor, really helps us stick to the basic math facts. Okay, on these, what we're doing is we're not going to actually solve it. We're going to compare them. It says without calculating. So we're going to be looking at a comparison. I can see here that I am multiplying both sides by two-thirds. So now I've got to look and see what am I multiplying by. Over here, I'm multiplying by 21. Here, I'm multiplying by 15. So since I'm multiplying 2 thirds by 21, this is going to be a greater number. On the next one, I can see here 3 times 5 fourths is the same. Now I'm multiplying by 3 fifths and multiplying by 3 eighths. Well, one of the things I told you a long time ago is that if you're numerators here are the same. Your denominators, the larger your denominator, the larger the fraction. So three-fifths would be larger than three-eighths, which would be smaller. And you can double check that by multiplying cross multiplication. If I go five times three, that gives me 15. If I do eight times three, that's going to give me 24. And that shows you that this would be the larger one. So once again, this is going to be greater than 
Going down to C, I'm looking to see what's being multiplied. And this is six times the sum of two and 16 30 seconds. And here it says six times two and adding it. Okay. Well, as you can see, I'm still be multiplying six times two here and six times two here. But over here, I'm adding 30 sixteenths one time, where here I'd be multiplying it by six. So once again, this would be greater than. Okay, Fantine bought flour for her bakery each month and recorded the amount in the table to the right. For A through C, write an expression that records the calculation described. Then solve to find the missing data in the table. Okay, A said she bought three quarters of January's total in August. Okay, so let me see if I can find my pen here. There it is. So she bought three quarter of January's total. So I know this is three fourths times total in August. If I go down here in August, oh, if I come up here in January, I mean, it's three. So it says she bought three quarters of January's total in August. So three quarters of three, which is gonna equal three times three over four, which equals nine fourths, which equals two, Two times four is eight. That means it's one left over, so two and a quarter. So that's saying she did two and one quarter in August. And B says she bought seven eighths as much in April as she did in October and July combined. Okay. So I know it's seven eighths times the sum of October, which was three fourths, and July, which was one and three, excuse me, one and one fourth. So we can see this becomes seven eighths times, this would be two, which ends up being 14 eighths, which equals one and six eighths which if you simplified, you see they did down here one and three quarter. And C says in June, she bought one eight pound less than three times as much as she bought in May. So she bought one eight pound less than three times as much as she bought in May. So May, she bought nine eighths. So this is what's three times less than what she bought in May, but it says she bought one eighth pound less. So I've got to subtract one eighth from that. So this is going to become 27 eighths minus one eighth, which equals 26 eighths, which equals three. Three times eight is 24, so it'll be two eighths. And if we simplify two eighths, I could go one times two and um, four times two, line them out, and that'd be one quarter. So it'd be three and one quarter. And that would be June's. Display the data from table in a line plot. Okay. So when you're doing a line plot, you have to determine First off, what you are plotting, okay? Now this here are the months, okay? So I'd be going January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. Now, I'm going to come to January, and it says 3. So, in a line plot, you use the X's. So, I'm going to say an X equals 1 pound, okay? So since it's three, it'd be one, 
two, three in January. February was two. March would be one, and I'd end up with a quarter X, okay? In this case, I'm just gonna put one slash, gotta be one quarter, okay? And then we got March, April, which would be one and three quarters. May, nine eighths would be one and one eighths. That's going to make it harder. Okay. I'd have to come up with a different key, but I'm just put one and an eighth in there. July, one and a quarter. I'm just going to put fractions just to get the idea. July would be one and a quarter. Oop, I made a mistake on June. So it'll be one and one quarter. Going back to June, this is 26 eighths minus three and two thirds. So we'd have to go through and solve this. So 26 eighths, I see eight would go in that four times. That'd be 20, excuse me three times, that'd be 24 with two eights left over. And we're subtracting, oh, excuse me, it says three and two thirds, I'm sorry. I thought they had a subtract and it was equal. So over here for June, we're actually gonna have three and two thirds, okay. August, one, two and a quarter September 11 fourths which should end up being 11 fourths which equals two would be eight and three fourths so one two and I'm gonna put three fourths up here in October three fourths this is what a line plot is supposed to look like um, I'd have to come up with a different one up here <clears throat> But that's the basic idea for making a line plot. E. How many pounds of flour did Fantine buy from October, January to October? Okay. So now we've got to add it all up. <coughs> so I'm going to go ahead and just add up my whole numbers. And I'm going to mark them off as I count them. I've got 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's 13 whole numbers there so far. Now I'm going to look for compatible fractions, okay? Because there's a quarter and there's a three quarter. So there's another one there. Now I'm going next one, nine eighths, which I know that it equals one and one eighth. So I'm going to put a one and one eighth here. And I can line it off. Here I've got another two thirds. And here I have a quarter. But I have a quarter here and a quarter here, so I'm going to go ahead and make that one half. And then I have 11, eight, 11 fourths, I mean, which we know that would be two and three fourths. So I'm going to go ahead and put two and three fourths in here. And I can line those out. And the last one would be three fourths. All right, so whole numbers, I got 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So I know I have 17 in whole numbers. I have a half and a half, which will give me a whole. And I've got a three quarter and three quarter, which will give me six fourths, which will give me one and two fourths, which equals one and a half. So I got one and a half, and I can line those out. Then I still have a two thirds. So now we have 19. Now we're adding one half plus two thirds. Now, like I showed you earlier, if we do the butterfly method, this is one times three is three, two times two is four, and that's addition, two times three is six. So this is gonna end up being seven, six, which equals one and one six. So now we have 20 and one six. So she bought 20 and one six pounds. 